And we are back on a Thursday. Happy Thursday to all of you. And no, a Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Get ahead of myself. You know, whenever we have a short week with a holiday, I, I always start fast forward in 24 hours. I lose track of time. My bad. Happy Wednesday. Let's try that again. Happy Wednesday to all of you. Thursday is tomorrow. My name is Steve Dace. Todd Erzin and Aaron McIntyre. They are here with me as well. If you'd like to join us today. 888-900-3393 is the number. That's 888-900-3393. Steve at stevedace.com is how you can email the program. That's D-E-A-C-E. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Steve Dace Show. And if you're looking for clips of this show that you can sample yourself and then share with others, go to youtube.com slash Steve Dace. That's youtube.com slash Steve Dace. Typical Wednesday around here, a weekly prophet of woe and lamentation. Daniel Horowitz will be joining us coming up in the final segment of the show. By the way, I have, I have listened to the last, uh, his podcast a little bit for the last couple of weeks. Mainly because I'm running out of my, my download time sports podcast to listen to, right? <laughs> that, that isn't all COVID exactly. panic porn and everything's racist, yep. you know? And um, I, by the way, hat tip to Dennis Dodd over at CBS Sports. I have never seen a man work harder for his unemployment, work harder to be put out of his misery and, 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 and to lose his job than he is. I mean, and you think our media is bad. Sports media panic porn on the virus is far worse, far worse. It's basically Clay Travis versus the world. Right. And Dennis, but even in that pantheon, Dennis Dodd, good Lord. I mean, I, I mean, he is, he is, he's working hard to lose his job. There's a, there's a part of me, although I, I'll be disappointed if we don't have sports this fall. There's a part of me though, that would just kind of like to see him be successful as an endeavor and watch him choke on it for a while. All right. But um, I've been listening to Daniel's podcast more. Boy, howdy. Dude, if you think he's bringing the woe and lamentation, on, on his weekly uh, stints on this show. We're getting, the, we're getting the PG version. I can promise you that. I, I don't know that I've heard an episode in the last couple of weeks where he's not called on Donald Trump to resign. All right? I mean, dude, it's just laying it down. So he will be joining us here uh, next hour. Of course, our weekly fun and frivolity known as buy, sell, or hold, where you get to take over the subjects that we discuss. That's coming up at the bottom of the hour. But before we get to all of that, here is Aaron's rundown of what happened while we were away. What happened while we were away, brought to you by Progressivism is a cult, example number infinity. And you remember, if you believe in one another, and if you do the right thing for yourself and your community, things will get better in this country. You don't need help from above. It's within us. And now we turn our eyes to Toronto, where this happened, where a bunch of progressives gathered together and repeated a mantra. You provide us with food, and now our minds are one. We greet and thank the trees, especially the maple, who provides us with the, fresh, with the first medicine after the winter. And now our minds are one. We didn't commit suicide. We committed an act of revolutionary suicide protesting conditions of an inhumane world. And now a tragedy of Western civilization in three acts. Act number one, Terry Crews tweets, If you're a child of God, you are my brother and sister. I have a family of every race, creed, and ideology. We must ensure Black Lives Matter doesn't morph into Black Lives Better. Act two, blue checkmark Holly Robinson Pete replies, Terry, angry emoji, we trying to matter and get to equal and you worried about better? Act 3, 1619 Project writer Ida Bay Wells tweets, It's official, New York Times is now capitalizing the B in black. Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin tweets a response to President Trump on June 12th, Seattle is fine, don't be so afraid of democracy. Headline from Catholic News Service from yesterday, Seattle Mayor declares autonomous zone protesters dangerous after they march to her doorstep. A new Pew poll shows a sharp decline amongst Republicans in their feelings about how things are going in the country. 55% of Republicans say they're satisfied with the country's direction in early 2020. 
Now just 19% say they're satisfied. In completely unrelated news, Fox News host Tucker Carlson averaged 4.33 million viewers in his 8 p.m. time slot on the network in the second quarter of 2020. That's the largest audience ever in cable news history. Radio host Hugh Hewitt told his audience this morning he's hearing from several conservative activists that Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito is considering retirement. Dr. Anthony Fauci testified in front of a Senate panel yesterday on the state of the country's coronavirus response and faced some pretty pointed words from Senator Rand Paul. Dr. Fauci, every day, virtually every day, we seem to hear from you things we can't do. But when you're asked, can we go back to school? I don't hear much certitude at all. I hear, well, maybe it depends. All of this body of evidence about schools around the world shows there's no surge. All I hear, Dr. Fauci, is we can't do this, we can't do that, we can't play baseball. Well, even that's not based on the science. I feel very strongly we need to do whatever we can to get the children back to school. So I think we are in lock agreement with that. I agree with you. I am completely unqualified to tell you whether you can play a sport or not. Headline from the Colorado Sun, Black Lives Matter protests may have slowed overall spread of coronavirus in Denver and other cities, new study finds. Headline from The Guardian a couple months ago, U.S. lockdown protests may have spread virus widely, cell phone data suggests. In New York, Black Lives Matter provocateurs danced in the streets in front of City Hall, awaiting results of the city's budget decision on defunding the police. News from China, a new report from China scholar Adrian Zenz is calling on the United Nations to investigate claims that aside from holding Chinese Uyghurs, Muslims in the western provinces of China, in concentration camps, the Chinese government is also forcing the sterilization of the Uyghur population and fitting women with contraceptive devices against their will. Also this week, the Chinese government announced what they're calling a new national security law for the region of Hong Kong. The law makes protesting illegal. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver, your thoughts? We all understand each other. You know, as I've said before, you know, we come to China with a certain set of core American values and principles. And I understand also they have a different form of government and they have a different view of how things have been done, how, how things should be done. And, and, and hopefully we can find mutual respect for each other. Joe Biden held his first press conference in over three months yesterday. Are, have you been tested for some degree of cognitive decline? I've been testing and I'm constantly testing. Look, all, you, all I got to do is watch me and I can hardly wait to compare my cognitive capability to the cognitive capability of the man I'm running against. And finally, somewhere in America, this happened. What we're watching is a topless dude with a skirt on yelling at police at a protest. Oh, a hairdresser has to go to school for longer than you do. Oh, yep. Half of you don't even have a college education to be yep. out here Stop making about that. demands about the people. And that's what happened while we were away. Aaron's Montage brought to you by our friends over at Patriot Mobile. If you haven't already made the switch to Patriot Mobile, their latest promotion might just be what you have been holding out for. Right now, they're giving you a choice. Either get a brand new phone or, if you want to keep your existing one, a free month of service. Because Patriot Mobile is America's only Christian conservative mobile phone company. They never charge you hidden fees. And unlike Big Mobile, they won't send your hard-earned money to leftist causes or groups trying to destroy the country. Plans start as low as $25 a month. And their U.S.-based customer service team was just rated number one among all wireless providers. So get nationwide 4G service and unlimited talk and text. Switching is easy. Keep your phone number, bring your own phone, or get a brand new Motorola G7 Play. That's their biggest promotion all year is what's going on right now. So you don't want to wait. Call 972-PATRIOT. That is 972-PATRIOT. Or visit patriotmobile.com slash Steve so we can stick together and support a great American company who is defending our Constitution while providing a valuable service at the same time. patriotmobile.com slash Steve. That's patriotmobile.com slash Steve. In the overtime today, we are going to discuss... Tucker Carlson's unprecedented success. This is the highest rated program now. Uh, the most watched program in the history of cable news. And he has done it by doing two things I have been told my whole career you could not do and be successful. And that is attack the Republican Party from the right, even in an election year. 
Sometimes I get away with it when it's not an election year. Typically, when I do it in an election year, I, I get besieged with notes. So you just want the Democrats to win? No, no, I'm not. So I'm doing this now so that they don't. I'm, you know, anyway, uh, he's attacking the Republican Party from the right, including Trump. And he is fearlessly pursuing culture war issues. Two things we're told we can't do. He's doing them. And now he has the most watched show in the history of cable news. What does his success mean for the future of conservative media? We're going to discuss that today with the overtime uh, at blazetv.com slash dace. If you're already a subscriber, just wait. Later today, it'll be posted there for you, blazetv.com slash dace. If you're not already a Blaze TV subscriber, that's where you can go to become one at a discounted rate, blazetv.com slash dace. There's so many things in this montage. I just, I, I mean, I could do whole shows on several of these topics. What, what Rand Paul did to Anthony Fauci yesterday, that, that could be an entire show. Yes. Basically, a doctor got Anthony Fauci to admit. I, I'm pontificating on things. I don't know a damn thing about half the time. Right? Yeah. And that's essentially what he got Anthony Fauci to admit yesterday. I just, you know, I like to hear myself talk. It's not going to change anything. No, it's not going to change anything, but he got him to admit that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. got him to admit that. Um, funny how not when they wanted to go to the Seattle mayor's house, and then when they have a couple of black deaths, all of a sudden, the idea of having a, a largely white horde of domestic terrorists occupy nine or nine blocks of my city suddenly you think is a bad idea and send in the police, right? I was told it was a summer of love, Steve. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, by her. We could do a whole show on that. We have done whole shows on what Aaron showed you going on in Toronto. I mean, we were the first show to tell you that this was a cult several years ago. It had all the ear markings. Of a, of a fake religious movement. And and now it just has the open air actions of one. What's happening to Terry Crews? First of all, do you guys know who Holly Robinson Pete is? Do you know who her husband is? Rodney Pete. Rodney Pete. I, I run her up for the Heisman Trophy. Um made millions of dollars in the NFL, many of those years playing for my favorite team, the Lions. I, I probably watched every snap he played. You know, I mean, this guy's, I mean, the systemic racism has had its boot to Rodney Pete's throat for so, so many years now, right? And she was a Hollywood actress. She was a Hollywood actress. He then went on to be in the, that, uh, the best damn sports show on Fox, as I recall, wasn't he on that too? I think so. I think with John Sally and all those guys as well. Right. I mean, everywhere Rodney Pete turns, Everywhere. Everywhere the Pete family turns, they simply just cannot get away from America's systemic racism. For the last 35 years. In fact, they've just cornered by it. Um, <laughs> I, I don't even know where to go with some of this. And Chris Cuomo opened his mouth and literally the devil came out. Guys. Opened his mouth and literally, Leon, Leon Fortunato and Nicola, that that's like thats like a page of dialogue from a Left Behind book, right? I mean, just flat, and just flat out said it, man. Just flat out said it. I thought he had just got done watching Batman versus Superman and really dug Lux Luthor's act and went that right. direction. Why didn't he just go ahead and go with, uh, let's find out if God bleeds yeah. while we're at it, right? I mean, I, it's... I work here. I'm in this space all the time. And when I got up this morning and went through my Twitter feed of what was trending online, and I saw all these various stories, I didn't even, I, I was numb. Like, I, I don't know how regular people that don't have to do this all the time, that aren't as involved in this as we are, right? Props to you for hanging in there and, and still tuning into shows like this, because I, I'm pretty calloused, you know? I mean, this is the arena I've chosen. It was chosen for me. It's what I was called to do. I think I've demonstrated I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not the last son of Krypton here, but I'm certainly no shrinking violet, right? I've, I've taken my share of punches and Lord knows delivered more than a few. And, and I just looked at what was, what was compounding this morning. I wouldn't even call it trending, just compounding. And I was just like, I, I have to go back to bed. I, I just, it was over, I like, like, I had to stop to breathe. 
Like it was just overwhelming. Like I, my, even, even the way my brain works where I, you know, I'm, I'm not really gifted at a lot of things, but, um, I was, you know, divinely gifted with the ability to take mass quantities of information and process them at a rapid rate. That's kind of what I can do. That's kind of my gift. And, and my, my CPU just shut down, man. It was just like, I literally heard a voice. Good morning, Dave. I, I mean, it was like, I became like the Hal 9000 and just decided I was going to fling myself into the monolith. I, I just, I, I, I didn't know what to do with it. I, I, there were so many things that I just, I could not possibly address them all. And I just found it paralyzing. You ever been like that before? Well, you can't possibly be prepared for total depravity incarnate and that's where we're living right now it you know we, we we every knee shall bend and by the grace of god our knees bent in this room at various points in our lives and all accepted some version of an understanding of the reason this grace is offered to us without merit is because of this thing called sin that is all consuming if we go our own path but and we know the stories of, uh, you know, Hitler. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, but but w when you're in the middle of it. It's like I, a maelstrom, man. It's a gift, though, that you can't. You, if, our, if we could wrap our brains around it, it would be such a cosmic a lie. Point. It's that's a, a gift point. that we are overwhelmed that, by that, it. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a very good point. I mean, let me throw something at you that is true. Okay. Did you know that for every day in the last two weeks, we have set a new record low for deaths, coronavirus deaths for that day since mid to late March. Did you know this? We've, we're on like a 15 day streak with this. Did you guys know this? I just know. Every that... day for the last two weeks, yeah. we have set a new record low for deaths that day in the last three plus months with coronavirus. Did yep. you know, did you even but, know that? But what I really want to know is whether or not three to seven football players will die because of coronavirus this coming season. Right. That That's the, you were referencing what that De Dennis, uh, Dennis Dodd, Dodd from yeah. earlier. Uh, how many premier soccer league players have died? Do you know? I have not heard of one. How many Bundesliga soccer league players have died? I have not heard of how one. many South Korean baseball players have died. I have not heard of neither, neither have I. And, Neither have I. And I've been on playing baseball for two and a half weeks now. I, yeah, how many high school baseball players you see just just drop dead right there? None. How many? We're, how about the? How about their coaches that they asymptomatically infected? Their old fat managers. How many of them did you see? Just, none. In the heat, no, just, I just, just, I, just yeah. that's it. Fetal, right there on the spot, dead. How I, many lawsuits are are these school districts facing? Well, that I can't tell you. Wait and see. But I've seen I see bleachers, and uh, lawn chairs full of not only parents, but grandmas and grandpas happy to be there. I'm telling you folks, every day for the last two weeks, that day of the week has set a new record low for deaths from coronavirus since mid to late March, so over three months. Did you know this, America? Did you know this? Well, Steve, the media won't tell us. Well, of course they won't. Can you think of someone with a large bully pulpit and a, and a tremendous following where they can, I, I mean, I, I was told that I had to put up with a lot of the stupid poop Donald Trump tweets because it provides him the opportunity to crush fake news media narratives, right? Right. Correct. That, that was the, that was the, that was the Faustian bargain, right? We put up with all the toxic sludgy tweets out there that we then have to own for our friends and neighbors, right? We have to own all that. So we put up a lot of that toxic sludge because it provides him the the ability to crush fake news media, right? Right. Is is he tweeting that out? Have you seen that? I is he is he still president? I mean, is he there? Has he, you know just, what? Is he on an island somewhere? That's actually where I want to go. Let, let, let's spend about ten minutes on that here. The Pew number. When I saw that last night, now caveat on polls. We started off this year even before we had an inkling of what this year had in store. One of my favorite college football podcasts tweeted out last night, here's hoping planet earth is a second half team in 2020. 
<laughs> you ain't just whistling Dixie, brother. Uh, second, all right, uh, that's that pretty much I thought summed the whole summed everything up. Here's hoping Planet Earth in 2020 as a second half team. That's that's well played. Yeah, right now the right score there. is what? What was the score in the Falcons versus the Patriots at halftime? Yeah, that 28 Super Bowl? to three. Yeah, this is more like uh, Cumberland College, Georgia Tech, 222 to nothing right about now. Um, but. Uh, um, I lost track of what I was going to say. Trump. Thank you. Where is he? You. All right. So even before we knew what 2020 had in store for us, remember we started off this year warning, we're going to put the least amount of stock in polls. And that was really meant for me as someone who's made a career, part of my career is studying them, doing them, analyzing them. So I'm going to put the least amount of stock in them as possible because I began the year thinking if they're just going to lie to us about Russian collusion, Ukrainian collusion, everything else. Why At this point, why wouldn't they just do a deep state operation on the polls are against you. Don't show up to vote. You can't win. Right. 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 Why wouldn't they do that? OK. They still may be doing that. It may be going on right now for all that matter. The only reason I want to talk about the Pew poll, though, is because in my career, when it comes to analyzing belief system trends, I have found Pew to be the absolute most reliable beyond a Barna survey that comes from our viewpoint. I mean, on the other side of the aisle, the, or the other side, I should say, of the worldview divide. They're from the world, not from the church. And Barna is. Pew is about the most accurate. I have come across. Now, I don't know if it's true that only 19% of Republicans think the country is heading in the right direction. Okay? But, but, even if the num even if the number's twice that, there is there's anecdotal information that confirms there's some at least whether this number's accurate or not, that confirms at least what's being asserted here by this Pew poll. We just talked about Tucker's aforementioned unprecedented success. And it's and it's hitting the majority party from the right. Right? Right. We have the largest audience on this show we have ever had. Ever had. Daniel Horowitz will tell you he's got the largest audience for his podcast that he's ever had. Um, last night was the fifth time in this primary cycle a candidate endorsed by Donald Trump lost a primary. Now, I, I don't know if that's ever happened in the history of presidential politics, man. Like, ever. I've never heard of that. I've just never heard of that. Normally, when a president puts his thumb on the scale and says, that's the candidate I want, they, they always get them. It's the second in just the last week. Had one in North Carolina last week. A guy I'd never even heard of, a 24-year-old, so I think he's a veteran with an inspirational story, he's disabled, came out of nowhere and won a primary going away against somebody Trump endorsed. Last night, it was a five-term incumbent congressman Trump endorsed, lost his primary. So there, there's at least anecdotal confirmation that the natives are restless. And I don't know if you guys know who Sarah Carter is. Probably a lot of you do. Uh, she has risen to um, deserved fame for doing a lot of debunking on the Russian collusion narrative. Uh, she's been an investigative reporter. You've seen her probably on Fox a lot, but she's become uh, fairly potent and popular on social media. And I saw something she sent out on Parler today saying that this next, you know, the election this fall is really an election between freedom and Marxism. That You can frame it any other way you want, but that's the way that it's about. She is right, or that's really what it's about. She's right about that. But you don't get to frame what the electorate thinks an election is about. The electorate does. So let me, I want to be very clear here. Because when I don't agree with somebody, I want to be very clear about that as well. Sarah Carter is correct. She's right about that. Although, did you guys see yesterday uh, Biden stand up there and say, absolutely, our troops should be sent defending, the government should be defending statues of the founding fathers? Did you guys see that? No. Yeah, he did. He says, I don't care about the Confederate statues, but Christopher Columbus, George Washington, you bet, you bet we ought to be defending those statues. You bet. Okay. But especially given Biden's obvious dementia, he's not running the country if he wins. He's not. Whoever is responsible for him behind the scenes is. Whoever his running mate is will have 
the kind of influence it was thought that Dick Cheney did at first and then as the Bush presidency went on, sadly, obviously did. But um, none of that's going to matter. You don't, I, it's like we don't learn lessons. The Democrat is a boogeyman argument is never successful. I'll take Barack Obama's two terms and the second term of George H.W. Bush that never happened and the presidencies of John McCain and, and Mitt McDole that never occurred for $1,000, Alex. <clears throat> the, the Democrat boogeyman argument doesn't work. It doesn't work. Because everybody that's voting on that, you already have all their votes. You've got all those votes. There's like, just like when we were going, we were discussing some of the crazed allegations about Donald Trump. And I used to say, who gets up in the morning that was ever thinking of ever voting for Donald Trump ever and got up in the morning and saw this latest anonymous scoop from the New York Times and thought to themselves, well, you know what, man, I was really all in on the Trump train. But after this anonymous scoop from the, uh, from the very respected and reputable New York Times, I, I just don't think I could bring myself to vote for him. Does that person literally exist in the United States? No, it, that person doesn't exist. Neither does the person exist, though. That is going to be like, you know, I, I didn't know the Democrats were Marxist, but you guys tweeted it out enough and I finally got the message and I'm totally okay with 40 million people unemployed and got to vote against Marxism. That person doesn't exist either. Everybody that will respond to that message, they already have those votes. They already have those votes. The electorate tells you what frames an election, not you. You don't frame the election for the electorate. They frame it for you. They tell you what the environment is. But, but they, they determine that environment as the response to you. And I don't, care if, I don't care if Joe Biden starts referring to himself as a ham sandwich from the stage. Donald Trump isn't winning with 40 million people unemployed, the country shut down, and civil unrest in the streets. He won't win. Moment. You cannot run on, look how bad things will be if my opponent wins, when you're the incumbent empowered to stop the really bad things that people are enduring right now. Remember when we tried Jeremiah Wright and everything else, and in the end, people didn't want to vote for John McCain, so they didn't. No matter how many boogeyman tales that we could tell that were all true about Barack Obama, it didn't matter. John McCain could not frame of an affirmative case for his presidency and so it just became about do you want change or do you want the same the third term of george w bush john mccain couldn't win that election didn't we just play this out in 2016 in the end people decided they didn't want a third term of barack obama they wanted something different new despite all the personal reservations they had about donald trump the electorate tells you what the environment is you don't tell them Now, you can influence the way they see the environment. But you can't simply run on my opponent is the boogeyman when you're the incumbent. You have to run on your record, your resume. He cannot win re-election on what has occurred in this country for the last four months. He cannot. Now, he's got about four months to, to change it. That's the good news if you want him to win. But if he governs better, then he gets to say, do you really want to turn the country over to a Marxist given how good things are going right now, right? Yeah. Then you get to say that. George H.W. Bush gets to run on, Michael Dukakis is a flaming member of the ACLU who lets people go off at death row on furloughs to rape and murder unsuspecting people like Willie Horton. He gets to run on that because he was running for the third term of Ronald Reagan, Soviet Union defeated, highest uh, GDP growth, post-World War II, right? When the record's good, you get to frame your opponent like that. But when your record's not good, you got to change your record. Because if your record isn't better than what it is right now, it doesn't matter how many things Joe Biden forgets, including his own name. You ain't beating him. More in a moment. 
all this working from home we've done uh, and shopping from home and banking from home and video conferences and meal deliveries from home because of the lockdowns has been driving up the worst type of cyber crime. Home title theft because our data is out there and more exposed than ever before. Cyber thieves see that data and then they take hold of it so they can then go online where your home's title is probably kept these days claim that they're you because they've got identifying information about you now and then they go on there and sign your home over to them it is called home title theft and the fbi is warning homeowners about it and that's why we want you to check out home title lock because your bank your mortgage lender your home insurance can't protect you from this but for pennies a day home title lock can and you can protect your home right now by going to hometitlelock.com register your address while you're there to see if you've already been a victim at hometitlelock.com don't let that hard-earned equity in your home that's your most important investment don't let somebody take advantage of you and take that from you Go to HomeTitleLock.com and also use the promo code Steve to get 30 free days of protection to help you through this crisis. That's promo code Steve at HomeTitleLock.com. Let's get to our weekly fun game of buy, sell, or hold. Our producer, Aaron, with a lot of help from his friends, you in the audience, he's going to throw Todd and I's way. A series of statements, predictions, prophecies on various topics, the ones you choose. Todd and I will decide, are we buying that? Are we selling that? Hopefully have at least one good reason why. Once per show, we're permitted a hold, but if it's for any reason other than, wow, that's that's lame, then uh, you will be slain uh, for that, uh, for punking out. That's how it works. Slain now? Yeah, you okay. okay that? Well, slain might, in the dude code. It might be slain in the dude code, Benny Hinn style, right? Pocket sand, right? It might be that, but who knows? <laughs> Aaron, you're up. All right. I think this week was uh, probably the most submissions we've gotten for buy, sell, hold ever, and a lot of them were really good. We'll try to get to as many as we possibly can. I got like can. a dozen or so in, via yeah, email. I got Hello. 150 or so uh, myself. All right. Uh, first one from Non-Hyphenated America, who says, A year from now, the majority of Americans will be required and or choose to wear a mask anytime they're in public. Majority sure. of Americans. I'll buy Required and or cho choose. Oh, could oh choose? Yeah, so both combined. I think that's an easy buy. Okay, then I think it's an easy buy, although I think the odds dramatically go down if Joe Biden wins the presidency. Up next, Todd Saffel says, with the country determined to tear itself apart, what is needed most isn't more William Wallace, it's more Desmond Doss, the conscientious objector, the uh, subject of Hacksaw Ridge. I'm not sure anymore. I don't uh, know. I, I, yeah, that's, that's, I'll, I'll take either. Yes. I'll, <laughs> I'll sell. I, I think what the country needs more than anything right now is is a transcendent figure of respect from the church like a Billy Graham in his prime. Somebody that everybody except the people that hate everything we stand for, which means people on of various political persuasions within that, within that body of belief agree that this is a person that has the uh, the credibility and integrity to play umpire, to call balls and strikes here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I think that's something the country probably needs more than anything else because on a, on a basic level, we just decide to accept what is true on the basis of whether it affirms my narrative more so than if it, on the basis of whether or not it is true, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and, and I think we need somebody with that kind of an apostolic calling that can, that can sit down in a long form interview and explain nuance. Let me give you, can I give you an example of what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I was having this exact conversation with my son over the weekend because he was talking about some of this stuff with me. I don't believe America is systemically racist. I do believe it used to be but I don't believe that it is now. I think that's a lie. But 
Now, now, did I just say that there's not a problem with racism in America? Is that no. what I said? No. No. But what what is systemic racism? Okay. Can we even define that term? Because when I hear systemic, what I mean is that the system is purposefully set up to work against you because of a particular race that you belong to. Is that what is but is, is that what it means? That's what I would assume. That's what I would assume it means. But can we even define that? Now, do I think that if you are black, you have more disadvantages than the average person who is white? Well, all the data says the answer to that is yes. You're more likely to be born out of wedlock. Um, you're, you're not allowed to say that one out loud. Okay, no. yeah, you're, you're, the life expectancy is shorter. Uh, black on black crime is far more plentiful than white on black crime or even black on white crime is. Okay. So there's, there's the achievement, the student achievement gap, black America is it, these are not debatable points. We can't debate this data on this show, nor would I presume to. I'm a data guy, right? Right. Okay. So then why does that not define systemic racism? Well, then, how do you explain the achievement gap between Asian Americans and black Americans then? A lot of Asian American families are still in the first generation or just beginning a second generation of being a part of our culture. I mean, you and I, Aaron won't remember this, but you and I remember when we, when we had the mass refuge sanctuary amnesty for Cambodian, Vietnamese uh, after Vietnam, yeah. right? We went to school with those kids, right? Uh, yeah, I did. And, you'd, and you'd, you'd go with your parents to parent-teacher conferences and they'd bring their parents and their parents often didn't speak any English, right? Right. But, but they were, their kids were kicking your ass in school, right? Right. Right. So how do you explain that? Well, there's, there's answers to that question. All of them, though, people feel like they can't be honest about because it'll get you fired or uh, off of social media or what have you. So... Racism is a problem in America. I can't, I can't ignore how many black folks have come forward who in many cases are otherwise sane to say, yeah, man, I got pulled over the police. They, they did that, right? We can't, you can't, just can't dismiss all of those stories. You just can't dismiss them all, right? No. You can't, can't dismiss them all. It'd be terrible if you did. But systemic racism it says to me that even if you make the right decisions, you cannot get ahead because the system won't permit it. I don't believe that's where we're at at all. But I still think racism is an issue. But I think that the system is now, is, is now engineered the other way. It's looking to incentivize you. You have to be willing, though, to accept those incentives and and achieve with them and succeed with them and not be a perpetual victim with them. But that doesn't mean we don't have areas that we still have to address within the culture at the same time. This conversation is impossible to have in 240 characters or less on Twitter. You certainly aren't going to have it on a panel on Chris Cuomo's show on CNN. I don't even know how many shows on Fox you could have this without succumbing to some form of demagoguery where eventually the conversation becomes shut up and dribble versus um, here I'm a multimillionaire NBA player let me lecture you about how America is systemically racist but China uh, is, a, is a haven for freedom and liberty in between its gulags and concentration camps right mm -hmm. so what we lack is somebody who comes from an arena of transcendent goodness who most people, unless they just are insurgents or iconoclastically, want to destroy America. Most people would agree. I mean, how many decades in a row did Billy Graham end the year on the top 10 most respected persons list, right? Right. Who has that level of apostolic calling that if they call BS or balls and strikes, still a majority of people would take it seriously? There's nothing like that. There's nobody like that. And, and I think if you, if you can't even have that, then, I mean, the William Wallace perspective, I mean, he's fighting over the borders to his own lands, right? 
we're fighting over what is a border and are you permitted to have them? This is not anything like that. That's not anything. It's postmodernism has, it has uh, men can have periods. That's insane. Uh, you're a bigot and you're banned. Nobody on that battlefield at Desmond Doss, the pacifist during the famous pacifist during World War II. Here it is. Okay. Nobody on that battlefield, nobody, whether they were Zeke Heiling, whether they were fighting under the Union Jack, whether they believed Hirohito was God, whether they believed Jesus was God, nobody on that battlefield, nobody on any of those battlefields thought men could have a period. Nobody did. Nobody did. Nobody did. So, I mean, if, if to me, you got to have somebody that we agree or an institution that comes forward and says, okay, that's a scam. Hey, have all your arguments about single payer healthcare and everything you want, but that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Have all your arguments about um, what the top marginal tax rate ought to be and um, whether a national income tax is better than a sales tax or no tax or, or what articles of confederation. That's not our that's not our job. But that's that's we got to call BS on that, man. That's cosmic. And that's a that's a scam. Who does that? No one. So, I mean. We need, we need an institution or somebody that stands up. I've used this quote before many times. I haven't done it in, several, in, in a while on this show. But when Vince Lombardi took over your Green Bay Packers, you've heard me talk about this before. Very first practice he ever held. This was a once proud organization, an original organization in the NFL. The original title, the original championship team. And it had fallen on hard, hard times. And when he walked into that locker room that day, there were men like Bart Starr and Forrest Gregg that would go on to become Hall of Famers. They just didn't know it yet. They didn't know it yet. He walked into that room and he, and he said to them, I haven't watched any film. We're starting all over again. I'm, I'm, we're just control alt delete here. Okay. We're going, I'm, I, I'm not even going to try to resurrect whatever culture you have within this organization. It's so downtrodden. We're, gonna, we're going back to basics. And he famously held up a football in this room of, of, of men. He said, here's our first lesson, our first practice. Men, this is a football. Those were literally his first words. This is a football. It's going to start all over again. Who, we need something or someone in our culture that does that. And that's, and I don't, I don't know what, I, I mean, I know what institution it is supposed to be. Yeah, I know what institution it is supposed to be. I'm just not sure who's coming forth to do that. I see too many pastors fall in the trap of becoming partisan shills on one hand or not engaging this arena whatsoever to avoid that on the other, with, which then just creates the vacuum that the, the spirit of the age will fill. Right? So who is that figure? Who does that? I think that's what we need. All right, moving on. Dueling Politics says, in light of Independence Day, here's a list of the least patriotic songs that you might hear at fireworks show. <laughs> number five, American Woman. Number four, nice. Fortunate Son. Number three, Rockin' in the Free World. Number two, Born in the USA. And number one, This Land is Your Land. Least patriotic songs. Uh, right. I mean, American Woman is, a, is not about patriotism at all. Fortunate Son is a protest song by the Vietnam War. Um... I don't know what Neil Young's Rocket in the Free World is about, actually. Although, since it's Neil Young, I'm guessing it's something left. Um, Born in the USA is also a lament of the, uh, of the Vietnam War and kind of the lost era of that. And that's why Bruce Springsteen was so upset when Reagan turned it into his 84 re-election uh, song. And what was, the, what was the number one song in there? What was it again? Uh, this Land is Your Land. Oh, yeah. That's a total hippie. Yeah. By Woody Guthrie, right? Who I believe is a racist. Actually, if I remember right. Well, everybody's a racist. No, but I, he, I think he's like a legit racist. Oh, like an actual racist. Like, an, like a Margaret Sanger level racist. Oh, wow. Yeah, like a real one. Hmm. So, okay, I'll buy that. Sure. Sure, I'll buy. Okay. Uh, one more, maybe this hour. Brittany J says, Abbott turned Texas blue this week. Business owners will stay home and Democrats weren't going to vote for him anyways. Close to a hold here. Uh, I'm going to sell 
but I think your premise is correct. I just don't know that it will go all that way yet, okay? But guys, even if Trump wins Texas, understand if he's spending money to defend Texas, you know, that and time and energy to defend Texas, that means he's not spending money and time and energy to someplace else. You know what I'm saying? The idea that we're even openly discussing that Texas is an open front is a bad, bad sign. If you've got to defend that. I'm selling and I'm going to resubmit my position. And I know, Steve, you took issue with it. I'll be fascinated to see if you're even changed in my direction at all. These these five elections that you say the Trump endorsed candidates have lost. Mm -hmm. I'm going to once again posit that it is possible that Trump loses and the Republicans retake the house because there's two separate huh. things going on there and uh, honestly that's my preference i think at this point i don't think I, i'd want all i three. see what you're cooking there todd yeah. yeah i thought we were talking about the senate when we talked about this before well we have the senate okay yeah but there's i don't think there's any way trump loses and the republicans retain the senate i don't think there's any way that happens i could see the house because that's more parochial district by district it's more right. microbial right okay i could see the house i still would say the odds are low but I actually think the odds are higher Republicans could win the House and Trump loses than they could. Be, you know why? Because a Senate election is what kind of an election? A statewide election. Mm -hmm. What is a presidential election? 50 statewide elections. Okay. So the, 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 the idea, because if it's not, this, are, are, is, is the Senate perceived as being to the left or to the right of Trump? Is the Senate perceived to being to the left or to the right? The left. To the left. So you're not lobbying a protest vote for your U.S. senator and getting rid of Trump. You know what I'm saying? There, there, there's no way they're keeping the Senate and Trump wins or Trump loses. That's not happening. All right. But I could see a parochial election where something crazy like that happens with the House. I still would not put very high odds on it. But I think the odds are higher than the Trump loses and they keep the Senate because I think those odds are in negative integers. Hour two, more buy, sell, or hold is next. Back with Hour 2, live and on demand here on Blaze TV, radio, and podcast. If you are a podcast listener, if you wouldn't mind leaving us a five-star review and hitting that subscribe button, if you haven't done those two things already, they certainly help the podcast to grow. Thank you to the thousands upon thousands of you that have done those things for us already. 888-900-3393 is the number. That's 888-900-3393. Steve at stevedace.com is how you can email the program. That's D-E-A-C-E. -E. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Steve Dace Show. YouTube.com slash Steve Dace. Coming up at the bottom of the hour, our good friend Daniel Horowitz, our weekly prophet of woe and lamentation, will be joining us. But if you, particularly as we get a little bit older, if you're struggling uh, with whether it's back, knees, neck, shoulder pain, often the underlying cause is inflammation. One of the more recent additions to my uh, health care and workout regimen is Omega XL uh, because it, as we get older, we want to beat that battle of inflammation so it doesn't cause permanent damage. The Omega XL is backed by 35 years of clinical research. That's right, 35 years. And it attacks the inflammation that's causing your pain. Pain relievers, topical rubs, I mean, they give you relief, but they really mask the real problem, the inflammation going on inside your body. Omega XL neutralizes that inflammation that causes painful and stiff joints and muscles. And I just can't tell you the difference that this makes in your mobility, your recovery, particularly if you've not been active for a long time and you're, you're trying to stay active, the soreness with the atrophy and everything that comes with that. And then if you've been active, but as you get older, it gets tougher, the recovery, Preventative health. We need to do a lot more of that in our country. Preventative health. A product like Omega XL uh, touches uh, or, or, or clicks on those boxes as well. So if you want to try Omega XL, if you're suffering from aches, pains, and stiffness, to get you started, you can order Omega XL right now and get a second bottle for free when you visit OmegaXL.com slash Steve. OmegaXL.com slash Steve. You can get started right now and get a second bottle for free. That's OmegaXL.com slash Steve. Or give them a call at 800-844-4888. 800-844-4888. That's 800-844-4888. Let's get back to Buy, Sell, or Hold, Part 2. 
All right, this next one's from Mark Olson, who says, Fourth of July fireworks are better than Fourth of July parades. Yeah, I'm not a big parade guy. I mean, I loved the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade when I was a kid. You know, you wait for Santa Claus to come, and that was kind of the unofficial, official beginning of Christmas time, you know. So parades are okay. Of course, I think fireworks are superior. So I'll buy. Bye. Next, this is from Jeremiah. I thought this one was uh, creative. Top five memory holes of the last 365 oh days. Oh, boy. Number five, impeachment. Number four, masks don't work outside of hospitals. Stop hoarding them from frontline workers. Number three, Kaepernick didn't show for his NFL tryout. Totally forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Number two, Biden sexual assault. Also forgot about that. Number one, the Houston Astros. Completely forgot about that. All right, put that list back up there for a second. Okay. That, that's it. Let's go through these. You're right. It, it doesn't seem it, it, like the impeachment never happened. Right. Oh, yeah. We had a literal impeachment vote like the third time or fourth time in American history. And it's like it never happened. Um, the masks don't work outside of hospitals. Stop hoarding them. That came from the Surgeon General of the United yep. States. And I want to say that was on February 29th is when he tweeted that out. I want to believe sometime yeah. around there. But mm-hmm. that was for if you're wondering where he got that from, the Surgeon General of the United States tweeted that out. Um, people do forget they did do a trial for Colin Kaepernick last year. He didn't even bother to show up for it. And then, and then didn't he try to move it to another location and like say- Like at the last minute, literally yes, the last minute. Because he was yeah. getting called out for, you know, uh, punking out. So he was he did that to save some face, right? Uh, number two on his list was um, the the Tara Reid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I forgot if, wow. That does seem like it was 10 years ago, right? And it never was really resolved one way or the other. It just went away. Um, and then the Houston Astros cheating- I'm totally tracking on this list, but you missed the most obvious number one. How is Jeffrey Epstein didn't mm. kill himself on here? Not on here, I mean. That is that's abs that's that is the number one memory hole of all memory holes, one of them of all time, frankly. Maybe eclipsed only by the Vegas shooting. That's that that, that in fact, I think we invented the term memory hole because of what happened with the the, the uh, you know the, the the wanton forget forgetting of the Las Vegas mass shooter, but nothing's a bigger memory hole than Jeffrey Epstein, man. That, that's got to be number one. So I'm torn. I love your list, so I want to buy it, but I think you missed the most obvious number one. So I think I should sell. I'm feeling charitable today. I'll buy. Okay, four out of five ain't bad. I'm I'm buying because the. The memory hole cup runneth over. I mean, there's no possible <laughs> yep. way a list of five could adequately address the memory hole. Moving on, Bacon says America lost the Cold War. I think based on how things have turned out now, yeah, you could make that case. I mean, I'm going to sell because yeah, the selling. Soviet Union was defeated. And ultimately, the Cold War was between, I mean, there were other fronts of Marxism beyond just the Soviet Union. It was just considered the hub for it, right? But the, the, the direct Cold War between the U.S. and the Soviet Union, the United States won. But I, I understand why, so I'm going to sell, but I understand why you're saying this. Because the next generation just imported and injected into our own bloodstream exactly what the previous generation defeated over in the Soviet Union. So I, 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 I know why you're saying that. I don't think it's nuts. I just will sell. Because in the end, it was between the U.S. and the Soviet Union, more so than, than the ideology corporately around the world. I will sell as well. Wesley D's Twitter talk show and Clown Emporium says, Blackberry Cobbler is the only thing better than cherry pie. Well, I got to sell because I can think of 70 things better than cherry pie. So I'm going to sell. Uh, I will sell, but cherry pie is very good. I didn't say it wasn't good. I just don't think it's, you know. It's, it's an odd hill to die on. Yeah, there. I, I, yeah I agreed. I agree. I think that's the odd one. Yeah. Uh, Israel Bissell says Fauci reverses himself more than a 16 year old learning to drive or a parallel park. <laughs> that's a good line. I'll buy. Yeah. I mean, it's at close. This, at, this, at this point, we'll cable news for food. That, that's what, whatever Anthony Fauci needs to say to get uh, to get on the air. I mean, at this point, the most dangerous place in America to be is between Anthony Fauci and a camera, all right? Okay, I think I'll, I'll sell, though, because I don't think he, he's not actually reversing of himself. To me, that implies that, you know, he felt convicted in one direction in the first place. You don't think contradicting this yourself is the same as reversing yourself in your view? Right, you think I think he's, def- he's, okay. he's very comfortable contradicting himself. I, I think he uh, marinates in a state yes. of contradiction. Yes, agreed. 
Uh, next, this is from David Schoen, who says Chief Justice John Roberts should end every opinion he authors with, quote, shh, just let it happen, end quote. I don't know what that means. Is that a line from a movie? Yeah. Okay, we're going to move on. I'm not going to explain what that means. Okay. <laughs> Devin Hensley uh, says, with police departments defunded, Black Lives Matter and Antifa will step up to provide polling location security and protection in November. And as a friendly gesture, they will uh, pro- politely offer voting suggestions or else. Oh, so do you uh, think Antifa is going I can to see that. show up at uh, No, I think this is largely going to happen in places Democrats are going to win overwhelmingly anyway. Like, could I see that happening in Portland or Seattle and some places like that or Cuyahoga County, Ohio, places like that, right? Sure. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, you saw Black Panthers do that in different eras uh, yeah. as well. I'm yeah. buying. Did you see that video? To, uh, I saw it for the first time today. It's in Long Beach, California. Some Crip Crips. gang yep. members. Yeah, they kicked uh, BLM and Antifa riot looters mm-hmm. out of their mm-hmm. out of their Wow. Head. Yeah. I did see that video. That is crazy. Uh, this one comes from Parlor. If you uh, want to nice. tweet any or uh, par- parlay, it's called parlaying anything in me. At McIntyre, you're at Steve Dace. Uh, Erzin is on there as well. Uh, this one is from Martin Parks, who says in 2024 the Pence Romney presidential ticket will drive down American fertility rates to an all time low. Bye. <laughs> Bye. That's not gonna. There, there's the only way there's a Pence Romney ticket in 2024 is if there's a giant schism in the Republican Party. Which I would love to see, by the way. It's way overdue. This, this party can't, it, it can't... It can't deliver on anything we want it to as long as you are continually aligned with people who don't agree with you. But if, if there's not a schism, there's no way they're going to come at you with something like that. It's going to be far more fake than that. Okay. It's more it, fake than Pence yeah, it's Romney. Good, it, somebody that at least can can embody <sighs> some of Trump's um, uh, social media bravado will be somewhere on the ticket, somewhere. Uh, because that that's what the Republican Party is. It's a facsimile of everything. It's a it's a derivative of everything. It's a caricature of everything. That's what it is. So, because so, they know that ticket loses forty states, they know that they're not going to do that. They're going to throw somebody at you that makes. They know they got to give you a Sarah Palin. They know that. So, Romney has no chance to be the nominee. He has no constituency in the party. Pence has a chance, although I don't think it's very good. But he has a chance. And so, if Pence is the nominee, there's going to be somebody next to him that is like the Trumpian Sarah Palin that they can build to you to get you to buy in. That's how they roll. That's how it rolls. They know that ticket has no chance to win. They know it doesn't. That's why they wouldn't do it. Because in the end, if they do that ticket and they get blown out, which they would, okay, they have to then take all the blame and they mm -hmm. can't shift it to the conservatives. Because it's... So there there needs to be somebody on there that they can identify... Just like like John McCain didn't lose the 08 election. Sarah 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 Palin Palin did, did, right? Okay? So they've got, they have, they, they have to find some way to never, ever get blamed so they can blame it on you instead. That ticket, they They'll get all the blame. Anyways. They get all the blame. They get all the blame. They won't do that. No way, to, no way to hide culpability with a ticket like that. Because it's so against brand for the GOP to be utterly incompetent and terrible and put forward the worst No, but the one candidates. thing they know how to do is F you. Oh, yeah. They can, they, be, are, they can have it all. They're the Yodas at that. They know how to F you and I. Okay? That they're good at. They're good at that. All right, moving on. Goodfella49 says the NBA and NFL will begin honoring Black Lives Matter activists instead of military heroes at sporting events. Bye. I could see that the NBA, the NFL won't do that. The NFL will try to do ad hoc. So I have to, I'm going to sell. The NFL will try to be all things to all people. You saw it during the draft. Okay? You saw it during the draft. The, the NFL will, will try to... The NFL thinks it's it's playing football in Yugoslavia. They're going to try to hit the Crimeans, the Slavs, the Kurds, which aren't even in Yugoslavia. I'm just naming people groups now. Okay, <laughs> all right. But the 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 you know um, the NFL is going to treat this like Yugoslavia. They're going to try to do everything. The NBA absolutely is going to do that. Okay, so but I, the NFL won't sell. So. I like how. <laughs> A utterly broken and shattered nation of Yugoslavia is the better alternative yes. yeah. to the NBA. Thank I, you. Yes. 
Yes. Uh, next is did, media. Did you ever, did you ever drive a Yugo? Lower. Oh no. <laughs> nah. Um, you, do you like to live, right? You like to live? You prefer to live? I'm sorry, Aaron, go ahead. Media Whistleblower says uh, BLM backlash pushes the 2020 NHL Finals ratings, a 10-year average of a 2.8 uh, share. Ahead of NBA Finals ratings, its 10-year average is 10.3. Oh, total sell. No chance. Yeah, that's a huge... NHL is yeah. a horribly run league. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just terribly run. I, 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 listen, I'd love for that to be true. But there's a level of incompetence... Michael Silver, you may hate his politics and, you know, you may, there's, I've even seen plenty of lefties trashing him in the last 24 hours for, uh, I've, I've seen one guy at the Daily Beast called him a ghoul for what he said about China, right? Okay. You may not like his politics, but he knows how to run a league. Guys, he permits no one to not stand for the national anthem in his league, gets no blame for it at all. And has all of his players and coaches go out there and trash the NFL for their stance on the anthem when in their own league, they all have to stand up for it before every game. All right. Michael Silver's a lot better at this than Gary Batman. Gary Batman. The, the, the two leagues are ones run dramatically better. So sell. No chance of that. So, in fact, I, I think I think <laughs> you'll be lucky if they get the NHL off the ground. And that you would think that would be like the easiest sport. Right, the guys are fully padded. Cover faces are covered the whole game. A lot of the teams are the places are spread out all over the world. You'd think that'd be the easiest one. Uh, you'll be lucky if they get that going this year. Jim Stalker says top five potential picks to play the role of Lord Nefarious in the forthcoming movie. Number five, Brian Cranston. Number four, Morgan Freeman. Number three, Christian Bale. Number two, Kevin Spacey. Number one, Matthew McConaughey. Do you um, need to plead the fifth here? I, I would plead the fifth if anybody we had discussed was on the was on the list. Put that back up there, okay? Um, I could see McConaughey, although you know he may be way beyond our scope. We're the, the Kevin Spacey thing. No way. Maybe five or ten years ago, but no, no, he's a no way. Not going anywhere near that. That's not happening. Um. Christian Bale is not, although if we were talking American psycho Christian Bale, I could see that, right? But he's, he's probably beyond our grasp. And Morgan Freeman, no. Brian Cranston, I frankly had not even thought of. But I will sell it's because we haven't discussed any of those names. The only one I'm interested in is McConaughey because he could both pull it off... Um, as a just the feel of it, mm -hmm. but he also has a worldview that can that appreciate it. Now, yeah. Morgan Freeman has a worldview on some level, I know, but it, too old, and and it's just not it's not him. And no. I don't know enough about the other three. And if you knew where we're, we're going to take the story, you would know Morgan Freeman won't work. Right, um, Matthew McConaughey. You're right. Uh, Remember that story last year when he was marching against uh, gun violence mm -hmm. and then showed up at the rally to speak for gun control mm -hmm. and then realized that they wanted to confiscate all the guns instead. And he's like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm totally fine with like <laughs> waiting periods and background yeah. checks, but you guys want to confiscate everybody's guns? I, I thought we were doing gun control, not gun confiscation. Remember that? Yeah. So you're right. He's got enough Texan in him that if if the script is good enough, he's somebody... you. you you at least see if, if he'd take a flyer on it, right? Yeah. Okay. But the rest of that list, so maybe we should can, we should at least talk about him, but uh, the rest of that list, none of those names have been brought up. All right. Next, Chia Jesus, Genesis 19 says, <laughs> the mob's obsession- Some of these names. <laughs> well, just wait till you hear what's next. The mob's obsession with raising R-A-Z-I-N-G- Erections is a Freudian extension of trans activism. That's brilliant, man. That's Freudian is what that is. That's Freudian level analysis there. Where everything is 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 essentially um, a substitution for your deepest, darkest desires and a phallus, right? Isn't that, didn't I just essentially sum up all of Freud's work? Um, I, I mean, I love that attempt. So I have no idea if that's even remotely close to true. I love the way, though, that you tried to go there. So I'll buy that. Just on admiration for what you were attempting to do there, Sigmund. I'll buy. Bye. 
All right, next is Dad Bodman, who says, Mount Rushmore of rock guitarists. One, Jimi Hendrix. Two, Jimmy Page. Three, George Harrison. Four, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Dad Bodman adds, donkey punch to whomever mentions the edge in this debate. <laughs> uh, I'm fine with three of them. And I'm the Beatles guy, but George Harrison doesn't belong on the list. How you don't have, like, Eddie Van Halen on the list, you got to have Eddie Van Halen on the list. I mean, Eddie Van Halen is like the original. We went back and retroactively applied this to Jimi Hendrix. But Eddie Van Halen is considered like the original guitarist, rock god, or Eric Clapton, who was given his own nickname, Slow Hand. So you don't have, you don't have, you don't have Eric Clapton. You don't have Eddie Van Halen on it. I got to sell that list, man. I got to sell that list. I'm selling it based on the Clapton principle and the Clapton principle. And this is just a fantastic rock and roll story. Somebody interviewed him once and says, what's it like to be the greatest living guitarist? And he said, I don't know. You need to ask Prince. So I'm going with that. Yeah. I, I mean, I was a Prince fan growing up and I, he, he may be a great star. And I just went and saw purple rain at the theater over the weekend. And wow, was that movie bad? But, um, yeah, in terms of guitarist, he's not. But Clapton said so, man. Yeah, that, that's, I kind of kind of call BS on that fake modesty there. Come on, man. Prince, I, have you, come on. They did a, a uh, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, and it seems like it was, I mean, was it for our tribute to to Her George Harrison? Uh, Tom Hetty was, Petty was singing, but it was an all-star get-together, yeah, and yeah. Prince was on guitar. Yeah. If you haven't seen that. I have not seen that. I might look that up. All right. okay. Good grief. Next is Dean Jones, who says Tucker Carlson will be given an ultimatum by September to tone down his language or be given his walking papers by Fox. So, no way. Not right now. Too big. The pressure will come actually after the election if Trump loses. If, if Trump loses, the fear that he will redefine the entire primary debate and make it really, because if Trump loses, man, it's going to be, you thought a whole bunch of guys wanted to run in 2016. If Trump loses, last one's a rotten leg, a rotten egg. I mean, everyone's going to want to run. Everyone is. So everyone then needs their narrative why they're the one to pick up the pieces from the part of the party after Trump has left it in tatters in this scenario, if it were to happen. What Carlson will do he would have, he would essentially be the gatekeeper of the Overton window on the right with that perch. And he would instantly disqualify probably 95% of these guys overnight. And if you instantly disqualify them all, they ain't raising money and buying all kinds of hundreds of millions of dollars in ads on Fox News to win a Republican primary. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that, that does matter, guys. It's why, it's why Karl Rove is still on Fox when his whiteboard was so wrong in 2012 and Dick Morris got kicked to the curb because one guy runs American Crossroads that raises $400 million in election cycle. And then a guy is a toe sucker named Dick Morris. That's why. That's why he's doing grainy videos on Facebook where he doesn't even look in the camera. All right. And Carl Rove is still on Fox because he can buy the ads. I'm just telling you, the, this is one of the reasons why they so favor the candidates that raise all kinds of corporate dollars, because those dollars then get funneled back to them in ad buys. And if Carlson, if Tucker's down there, like Commodus, man, thumbs down on Pom Mike Pompeo, thumbs down on Mike Pence, thumbs down, just start naming names of guys who want to run. Those guys are going to raise huge amounts of money. And you got Tucker Carlson pronouncing the time of death before they even get out of the starting gate. They're not spending $20, 30000000 million running aggressive ad schedules on Fox. The pressure on, I see, you're in a purview where I have some experience here. You know why I know this? Because it's what I went through on a micro level on the largest media platform in the first in the nation caucus state. And after Mike Huckabee won in 08, the idea was that I controlled the Overton window of the Iowa caucuses. Not true. I have influence and in a, in a good amount. But frankly, my friend who's go down, down the hall has a lot more influence than I do, if we're being brutally honest. But since I was on the air every day, the idea that, it, that I'm the one that controls that gate. And by the way, if you wanted to win a Republican caucus, what's the one media outlet you've got to blow out with ads? The radio station I was on. 
Well, if a bunch of candidates know they're not, that I'm not going to support them, and therefore they're not going to get in front of my audience, they're like, well, why would we buy, why would we buy ads in your radio station then if your afternoon guy's already, who's got all the influence, is already pronounced as dead, right? Right? Mm -hmm. this, is the, this is why I got so much pressure. This is what Tucker's going to face if Trump loses. I promise you that will happen. And so bef between now and the election, no. After the election is when I believe the pressure will come down on Tucker Carlson. Because they're going to want, we, we, yeah, let's do de a million debates, 20 candidates, all kinds of people will watch, 50, 100 million people will watch, huge ratings, huge ad buys. And you've got Tucker Carlson there with the largest audience in cable news saying, that guy's a fraud, that guy's a fake. What's the point of that guy even running? Why would we listen to anything he said? Remember he, you blow all these guys up before they've got a chance to cash in. You have to understand, folks, the vast majority of people on our side, uh -uh, our side, believe in the Aaron Burr school of government. That, and Aaron Burr literally said this once. Government exists to line my pockets. This whole process exists to line my pockets. Most people, that's why the Tea Party was great for 10 minutes and then the grifters vultured in. Most people on our side that you watch, read, vote for, they want to be a brand, not an apostle or a founding father or William Wallace. They want to be a brand. They want to make money off of this. And so you've got Tucker Carlson there, you know, delivering sodium pentothal every night to the 35 Republicans that want to run for president next year if Trump loses, and, the, and suddenly the list is down to two or three, that's a hell of a lot less money for all these, all these channels like Fox and ad buys. They're not going to want that. They're going to want the show, man. The show. That's what they want. That's why the pressure will come on him after this election if Trump loses. I more or less agree with all of that. September's the wrong date to pin that to. F.U. Paladin says, in a near future Star Wars film or series, we'll see the invention of a lightsaber. I could buy that. Yeah. I could buy that the way that they feel like the save Star Wars is to go further and further back into its past. I could absolutely see that. You bet. I don't care for the reasons you and I talked about before the show. This franchise has no idea. I mean, dead no me. idea. Dead to me. What it's it's a farce. Todd is like it's dead. They are to talking. Me. They are talking. Memory hole. They're talking about memory holing the whole sequel trilogy. Like it's not canon. Never happened because it was that bad. They did that to Star Wars. All right. Next, nucleus of the caring says an NFL player will be released because he refuses to kneel for the national anthem. Bye. Well, we just had that in Canada. No, what they had in Canada was a guy said tweeted out that he believes that uh, men were supposed to have sex with women and women with men. And he got cut from his team after he tweeted that out. That happened in Canada just last week, I think, for the Canadian Football League. Um, sell. I don't think it'll happen. I don't. Because the NFL doesn't believe in any of this. The NBA does. All right? The NFL is, is Hillary Clinton. The NBA is Barack Obama. The NFL is fine talking about these things and promoting them and marketing them if they think it's good for the shield or the brand. They're not interested in fighting a culture war. They're interested in being on whatever, they, whatever side they think may, will make them the most money at any given time. So I, I'm, I'm, I don't think the NFL will do that at all. I don't. I think there's far more. I think in the NBA that would happen, you bet. So sell. I buy it. I bought. Okay, uh, let's see. Envy of a malcontent says an FBS program will refuse to play a game because Black Lives Matter. I will buy this. I told Todd from the very beginning there's far higher likelihood that this will cost a season or a team a season than the virus will. Okay, because because this this is the spirit of the age on every college campus in America. And yeah, I mean, we just, so how, I don't, how many kids go to Kansas State University? 30, 40,000 maybe? Probably. Okay. One nitwit tweets out some, something that is at the very least offensive, if not outright racist. And because of that, the entire Kansas State football team says we're walking away. We're not working out until that guy's expelled. 
Could I see that happening? You know, they're playing Albany State that they're going to beat 70 to nothing anyway. And they decide this is the week to make their political statement and get their social justice ratio on. abso friggin lutely I could see that. You bet. Far higher likelihood that this stuff is going to is going to is going to get in the middle of your college football season, I believe, than the virus will. Which is why I predicted it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, next, Calvin McRae says the lack of will to stop the looting and rioters is not all orange man bad. It's because many of them are the children of those in positions to make those calls. What was the last line? And this is the product of what? This is the product of many of the people who are in the position to make the calls to stop the protesters and looters and rioters. Okay. Uh, having children actually out there on the street. Yeah, I, I, <sighs> yes and no. You know what? I like what you're trying to do, so I'll buy it. I I agree that Orange Man Bad is not the origin of this. It's it's why they've been let, but it's why they've been let out. They've been let out for Orange Man Bad. But I agree that that's not the impulse that is driving them. It's just the impulse that's driving us to let them out. Polit I agree. so I'll buy because I get what you're where you're going with it. From, so I'll buy. I'm more or less in the same area. Steve is. Bye. All right. Actually, we don't have enough time. I'll get this. I'll get this in really quick. A Republican controlled state or city will have a homeowner shoot and kill a protester in the next four weeks. The homeowner will be charged with second degree murder for it. Bye. We're headed that direction very I'm, fast. I'm going to sell just out of hope that that doesn't happen. Okay. I'm going to sell out of hope that that does not happen. Our weekly prophet of woe and lamentation, Daniel Horowitz, joins us next. One of the things we're doing a lot these days is spending a lot of money on supplements because a lot of that stuff that we need the most from our food has been taken out for mass consumption, mass production, long shelf lives. So a lot of the vitamins, nutrients, omega oils, prebiotics, probiotics, the things that we needed the most from our food are no longer there because if you left them in, uh, the food wouldn't last as long. And that's why, you know, we think we're saving money by buying all this cheap food that's then stripped of what we need the most from it. And then on the back end, we got to go buy more supplements anyway. Well, the same thing is going on with our dog's food as well. Uh, and that's why you want to check out Rough Greens Vitasmart because it's not a dog food. It is a premium dog food supplement that apparently tastes great because our dog cap absolutely loves it. You sprinkle it on your dog's food and then all the vitamins and minerals and nutrients that are taken out of your dry dog food for the same reason it's taken out of our food, suddenly goes back in. And right now, you can get the 14-day Jumpstart bag for just $14.95 to see the difference in your dog in two weeks or less. Just go to roughgreens.com slash blaze. That's R-U-F-F for roughgreens.com slash blaze. Again, roughgreens.com slash blaze. Let's bring in our weekly prophet of woe and lamentation, our good friend Daniel Horowitz. Good to see you, brother. How are you? I'm doing all right. Can't wait for the 4th of July. I'm not even sure. I was telling the audience an hour ago, I'm running out of sports podcasts because there's no new information now with, with, with so long without any games that it's just all everything's racist and, um, and uh, panic porn as, as, as sports media literally lobbies for its own unemployment. OK, um, so I've been listening to your podcast a little bit more these last couple of weeks, dude, and you have been in fuego. All right. And I, I told the audience, whatever you think you're getting when he shows up on this show each week, this is like the PG version. I mean, I don't know that I've listened uh -huh. to an episode in the last two weeks. We haven't screamed and called on Trump to resign. OK, so I, I, there's so many things I want to ask you. Let's just start with a big picture question. Where are we right now with this virus? Well, I thought you'd say, where are we in the country? I mean, we have a one-sided civil war, and this is a part of it. Um, where where are we with the virus? So so where we are is where, where this started out, but now it's become clearer as the data come in. This was a way of suppressing, we the people, the unfavored classes of Americans that do not have equal justice under the law as the Declaration of Independence called for under the social compact. That's what it was always about. How do I know that? Because what we have since learned is that there is now a spike going on in every state. It's not just the South, by the way. It's pretty much every state that didn't wring out every juice that you had there, de facto herd immunity in the Northeastern states. Now, it's mainly illusory, superficial, 
and what is spreading beyond the illusory superficial accounting is very mild. In fact, in most cases, not just, you know, if it's not asymptomatic, it's less than the flu. And as one doctor in Houston described, it's a mild cold or like allergy like symptoms. I mean, that's that's what it's down to. It clearly has weakened qualitatively um, so that so the, it is nothing. So the threshold for locking us down is now a common cold, um, which usually if everyone gets it, that means it's very weak. Um, that's just how it is. So it's spread far and wide. It's very weak. But what we did learn is that spike that the media, who, which disagrees with me and believes this is Armageddon, that was caused by two things, mainly one thing, but another thing at the border. The right of Mexicans or dual nationals to come in during a pandemic while we're locked down, where we had a travel ban against uh, Mexico so we don't spread COVID, except if you come with COVID, then we bring you to a hospital because we don't want to overrun the hospitals with COVID. And then... The protests. It is now abundantly clear, and the media is even admitting this, the largest paper in Cleveland, on in Houston, the timing and the cohort getting it works out perfectly, Steve, perfectly with the protest after May 30th. It is, I mean, right in line with the, the case to hospitalization, the uh, incubation uh, duration. It is Perfect. It matches up 100%. See, you could have a virus that shifts gears, gets a little weaker, shifts who it targets, and that does happen. But nothing that mechanical. Like, it's not even like, okay, it's 20 to 55-year-olds now. It's 60% of the new cases in Minnesota were 20 to 29. Okay? And, And this is happening. This is happening everywhere. So... What we are finding now is that not only did they tolerate the anarchy, not just as an end to itself, the looting, the maiming, the blocking of streets, the beatings, the arson, but even for them to spread the virus. And then once we have the results, they turn around to us and say, hey, buddy, you didn't lock down enough. You're not wearing a mask. That is how sick and immoral and illegitimate our government is at this point. It does not have a shred of legitimacy. See, we're not going to be celebrating July 4th this year because, well, A, you can only have fireworks if you're throwing it at cops. You can't have it at a celebration event. But we're not going to celebrate it because we don't have a republic anymore. We don't have governance by the consent of the governed. We don't have a government of, by, and for the people as a whole. We have a government of, by, and for foreign nationals who a Trump judge just gave standing to now say 7.8 billion people could declare asylum even if they uh, um, could pass through other countries. It's mm-hmm. a Trump appointee, by the way. The same judge, by the way, that said Jim Acosta um, has a right to a press badge in the White House. So I just want your audience to know the Republican judges uh, rock. Um, we have a country of by and for illegal aliens. We have a country of by and for protected classes. Um, where you have a right to beat and maim and block someone's car and lynch them, but you don't have a right to self-defense at your home or in your car. That is what's happening. You can't get too into the virology. I mean, we I could talk to you all day about the data. It's on my my, uh, daily podcast, my articles, if people want to see them. But that is where we are as a nation. This was always a tool in the anarcho-tyranny design that has replaced a self-governing republic to suppress middle America, to suppress the whole of a people, which includes all people of races and creeds, if you are not part of a protected class. That is the most important takeaway as we head into the holiday where we're supposed to be celebrating our independence. So you've got a majority Republican state legislatures. I think we still have a majority Republican governors. You have a Republican president. You have a majority Republican Senate. You have a majority appointed Republican Supreme Court. Why then does it look like we're on totally our own and we're completely helpless against all of this? Because the Republican Party is to the Democrats what the Muslim Brotherhood is to Al Qaeda. And what that means is it's not just that they're feckless. They facilitate. They accomplish for the left what they could not accomplish alone. If you literally had no Republicans around now, 
the country would revolt. I mean, all but the 20 percent that's extremely radical couldn't go on. Right. With I mean, if a, Texas, if, if, if a Democrat governor in Texas polled on Friday what Greg Abbott did last Friday, our yeah. people would have spent all weekend out in the streets opening their businesses up. That's what they would have done. CNN.com on Sunday had an article People coming over the border with coronavirus. It wasn't a blog, a right wing blog. It was CNN and Greg Abbott c- could could not hold the ground on what CNN asserted. He was like, "Hey, there's too many people, uh, businesses, uh, shut them down." Um, and then you had a Newsweek article. This is the other part of it. These are the milder cases, um, not Mexico's first epidemiological curve, but America's second spread, and. They had an article from Newsweek that Houston, which was the epicenter of the main funeral of the 100 funerals for, for Floyd, um, a lot of people who went there got sick. Um, I, I think mildly sick, but but you know in their mind, that's Armageddon. Mm-hmm. And, and, and literally, I mean, there's no difference. There's no difference. And all they do is they serve as a punching bag, as a false flag for the Democrats to facilitate it because it's the Republicans' fault. Look at what they're doing. You have all these outcomes on Republicans' watch, on their watch. It's like, not forget about all the things Trump could do at a federal level. But you have lynchings taking place in Provo, Utah. Okay? You have them taking place in Tennessee, in Georgia, everywhere where the roads aren't secured. I mean, this is happening everywhere. In Gainesville, Florida, a man was arrested for running through a crowd when he, when they surrounded him. So either you get shot like the guy in Utah or you get prosecuted. And, you know, it's funny how the police are comatose when it comes to clearing the rioting. But the minute you employ some self-defense, it's funny. They get a resurrection and somehow the wheels of justice come turning. Again, we have a class system in this country we have what's antithetical to the seven principles expressed in the 201 words of that preamble of the Declaration. I don't know what we do, Steve, at this point. But what is important to note is that we do not have a legitimate governing body in any way. This is Afghanistan. This is Fallujah. This is Mogadishu. In our overtime, after we're done with our show today, we're going to discuss Tucker Carlson's booming success right now he's got the largest audience in the history of cable news and he's done it brother with a lot of content pretty familiar to audiences like mine and yours right so you're not going to be in the overtime i'm i'm interested to get your perspective on what you think this means about the future of our medium industry whatever movement this is going forward what is it what does it mean in your view It means what I spoke about with a firearms instructor yesterday. He told me he's never gotten as many calls as he's gotten from white, rich liberals uh, who want to learn about firearms. Hey, what do I get? What's the best thing for home defense? You know, we, we, we talk about polling a lot. Issue polling is garbage because it's all the way you frame the questions, garbage in, garbage out. But there's a great poll. The best poll of all is people's pocketbook. You look at gun sales. Nothing motivates people like fear. Now, that is harming us with the corona fascism, right? Because the media is stoking that fear and panic where people can't think rationally about what's going on with the virus. But where it benefits us is with the violence. Um, even a transformed country, certainly people with families that aren't, you know, single hippies riding in the city, they do not want this. They are scared. This was on display before all Americans this week with that wealthy, what appears to be liberal couple in St. Louis that were forced to defend their home and they were immediately doxxed online and smeared and everything. Now they fear for their lives. I'm just telling you, this firearm instructor told me these people are stupid, stupid for not appealing to them. They're stupid for appealing to the looting and rioting vote at the expense of the suburban vote that doesn't like Trump's personality. But dude, I mean, when you're fear and in panic, Mm -hmm. you're willing to do anything. We've certainly seen that with the virus. Mm -hmm. I mean, you speak to them. I'm going to loosen gun laws on those that don't have criminal records and go after the gun felons, the felonies that apply 
and 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 they they leave off on the federal form that they have a felony. That itself is a felony. Prosecutors aren't prosecuting that. I mean, there are so many things he could do to go after gun felons, repeat violent offenders, probation violators, um, that are already federalized, and speak directly to self defense. I'll have your back as president. We're going to expand the Castle Doctrine and the uh, stand your ground laws. I'll federalize them. Heck, we're federalizing everything, so we may as well federalize good things. I have a list of 10 things that Trump should be doing. What, what, what? Getting back to Tucker, ratings are better than polls. Right. They don't lie. I right. mean, this is hard data. Yeah. People are starving for this. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad one of the things that Tucker did, and he even apologized for being a part of this, and I'm glad he did because I could have used his voice three years ago when I was saying this, Focusing on the vanity, focusing on the stupidity, focusing on the Peter Strzok stuff when we had every fabric of our society, security, economy, liberty, social values ripped to shreds and Republicans joined with it at every turn. And we had all that power. We had three branches of government and we did nothing with it. We'd have a budget battle and McConnell would rape us and Trump would agree to sign it and I'd be yelping about it that day. This is your last opportunity. This is your opportunity. And it would be some stupid vanity. And you know what? You and I had a debate. Remember, do people want candy or steak? And I yeah. said- Cheese stick or people, cheese stick. Or che yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, cheese it's or steak. And yeah. I said, of course, yeah. people will take the cheese it's no matter what. They'll right. take it. But if you actually offer them steak, I think they take that as well. And Tucker is and proving if you offer you, the steak, they'll take it. And a lot of people are going to be mad at you, and I apologize if you lose listeners. But everyone says to me, Daniel, no, no, in November, November. We, we, but I understand, but we need to win the election. We can't do some destabilizing things, and we need the Republican Party. Trump has to win. Now, it's absurd, obviously, on its face. But if you subscribe by that, that means the most important thing is for Trump to win. Right now, he will not win. I agree. If you don't do what we're saying, he won't win. Right. That is the sick irony. Yep. So if you subscribe by, I don't think that's the solution. The solution is much greater than that. Right. But if your solution is Republicans winning in November, you have an obligation to ask this man to step aside so we have a guy that doesn't have the liabilities of him but has a law and order persona. That guy will crush Joe Biden. That's what the Tucker numbers show me. Great stuff, brother. Good to see you as always. God bless. Take care. Take care. Happy 4th. Same to you. Buying and selling a home is stressful in any market, particularly one as mercurial as this one. And if you're going to go all in, make sure you've got a real estate agent that goes all in with you and you're going to find one that you can trust at realestateagentsitrust.com. You want to make sure you're partnered yourself with a competitive winning machine, a team of people who are going to see it through to the end for you. Last time I went through this was 14 years ago. I was buying on one end, selling on the other. Very stressful process. No way I would have made it through with my sanity without a real estate agent, my agent, Scott, that I could trust. I still recommend him to people. I uh, still see him around town every now and then. You're looking for that kind of an agent for yourself. And you're going to find them on this website, realestateagentsitrust.com. The name kind of says it all right? You're looking for that right agent for you. Not somebody just talks a good game, but can also deliver the results. You'll find them at realestateagentsitrust.com. Thoughts on the conversation we just had with Daniel Horowitz. Is Trump pretty much just Colonel Kurtz at this point? That's a good analogy. I'm just wandering around the cave, mumbling about you know, various media personalities. And that's why I, my, I, I say that out loud to put another gloss on what Daniel is saying. I mean, there's just no, there's no there there with this thing. And not, uh, uh, pretending otherwise is just, a, is silly. We're going to stick around for the overtime and, and we're going to give our take on what we think Tucker's booming success means for the future of conservative media. We'll get into that, blazetv.com slash dace today. For the rest of you, we are back at it again tomorrow, noon to 2 Eastern, right after Glenn Beck. Until then, John 317.